Hello and welcome to Willow's Green Permaculture. Last week or so I've been really, really busy. So busy that things like uh, gardening uh, by the cycles of the moon, uh, that's gone right out the window because there's just so much that has to go into the ground, things that that are ready faster than expected, things that take longer than expected to be ready. And then now it's like, everything has to be going in the ground because uh, you know, the, the season's getting late. So it's been a crazy week, but uh, Magali and I have still found time to enjoy the nature around us because that's the point. The point is to be living with nature and, and enjoying life living close to nature, enjoying all the food that comes from nature and so on. So we've taken that time and, and uh, but we've still been really busy, both of us. Uh, Magali, uh, one of the things she did this week, she, she harvested some lilac blooms and made some lilac syrup. It's our first time, it, it was really nice. And lots of just really nice things going on. You know, the greenhouse is finally starting to empty. For the first time I've let the rhubarb ripen and go to flower. I've always, I remember as a kid seeing the rhubarb at friends places that was huge and flowering. And this is my first time that I get to see rhubarb doing that at home. And it's really nice. Um, the blue spruces are really beautiful this time of year. Uh, the forest is coming alive. It's full of ferns. And, uh, and, and there have been some moments of quiet and rest with the, uh, you know, a day full of rain, which is uh, very, very restful. Yeah, just a quiet, kind of gentle rain waters really well. But you know, talking about being busy, uh, you know, the whole point of doing a food forest, of doing permaculture, is eventually not being busy. Being a lazy gardener, not being busy and having the stuff that uh, being able to eat the things that come back eat the things that are growing in the forest or all the different edge ecosystems that are around the, the prairie ecosystem forage ecosystem riparian river e ecosystem and the edges between where you've got biodiversity is the best um, and so today i'd like to talk about one of those plants that i've learned in the last couple of years is a plant we can count on to come back every year. Uh, and so therefore can be a staple of our food forest. And that's the potato. Uh, I never knew before living here that uh, you could count on potatoes coming back. And, uh, you know, I thought it was a fluke the first time it happened, but when it, it happens everywhere where, where we planted them. And so I'm gonna show you our different potato patches and and uh, how I put it in and so on. And then there, and, and there'll be a few other things, you know, we're so busy. Can't, I can't show everything, the video would be too long, but uh, uh, I'm gonna be transplanting some uh, carrots as well in today's, uh, in today's video and uh, showing you a, a few other snippets of different things, including a beautiful damselfly. And there's a little story about that. So, uh, looking forward to sharing all this with you and let's get started. These potatoes came back. These potatoes came back. All of these potatoes came back. There are potatoes in each one of these eight hills that all came back. I don't even remember planting these potatoes but they came back too. These potatoes came back. They grew one year and they just keep coming back. I didn't even plant them. More potatoes coming back. On one of our pathways. Oof. Look at them all. Gonna be having thousands of tomatoes. Potatoes, I mean. These potatoes came back. So I'm really amazed by these potatoes, by all the potatoes, because every single kind comes back. 
the one that I've seen most is the purple Peruvian, but I just think it's because they're smaller, and so I miss more of the. I've missed more of them in the past when I've harvested them, and they're also a darker color. So I've another reason why to miss them when I'm harvesting them. Uh, so I'm really impressed, and so what I'm going to do this fall, because basically, what I'm hoping is that this past week is the last time I ever have to plant potatoes. And what I'm going to do this fall is I'm going to work less. I'm not going to harvest all my potatoes, especially not the little ones. While I'm harvesting them, I see little ones, I'm just going to leave them there. Maybe bury them a little bit extra, but I'm just going to leave a whole bunch of potatoes there. I'm going to try and leave about as many potatoes in each patch as I would normally plant in the spring. And so it's going to be a lot less a lot less harvesting for me and a lot less storing as well because I've had to store the, the potatoes that I want to plant the following year. So it's going to be less work, less harvesting, less storing, and of course next spring, less planting. All I should need to do uh, next year is just add compost, add organic material to hill up the potatoes as they grow. And, uh, you know, for instance, I, I've spoken to you about the fact that they, they grow in with our three sisters in the center of the garden. Well, next year, I'm just going to let those potatoes take over there. Maybe I won't even plant three sisters. But they're also growing in other, uh, other places where we, we'd like other things. And so this year, we're also going to try something new because I've noticed that this year with my three sisters, I, where, where I've got the potatoes growing, I'm going to keep, I, I've been just pulling the sprout, the, the shoots as I see them, kind of cutting them off at ground level. And of course they keep coming and I'm going to keep cutting them until, until my squash, my beans and my corn are basically up, up high enough that the potatoes can grow and not bother them. And so it'll be very interesting to see what kind of, of a uh, harvest of potatoes we get in that spot. And elsewhere where we got potatoes where we maybe have flowers growing or other things that uh, we want to just see for aesthetic reasons, we're also going to try something else new this year. We are, gonna, we are going to trim our potato plants, some of them anyway, not the main ones in the main garden, but elsewhere where they're growing, we're going to trim them, keep them low, and by trimming them, they, sh they should uh, produce a lot more side branches and so on, and maybe they'll also produce a lot more side side roots and let's say the side stems in 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 the ground where the potatoes grow we'll see uh, it's just one big experiment and we'll get the results in the fall because we have potatoes growing everywhere and and if we were to let all of them grow we'd have way 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 more than we need of course there's no problem with that as well we can share it we, we can share the uh, potatoes with with uh, food banks or with our friends or we can sell potatoes as well uh, we'll see but uh, it's just something else. Uh, so the, once again, we're going to be at a safe time because at the beginning of the video, I talked about the fact that we were really busy. And so the whole idea is not to be as busy. And so potatoes are going to be maybe one of the things that are going to allow us to not be as busy. And as each year goes by, other things uh, come to fruition where, for instance, fruit trees and so on. I can't wait to find out how that's going to be this year. But that's uh, that's to come. Let's continue. Here are the potatoes planted a couple weeks ago in a recent video. Now I'm planting the rest of my potatoes. There are those the volunteer potatoes that grew from last year. There were a few others, but I've covered them up in soil. They'll come back. Now, I'm just throwing them in place. I'll put a bit of soil on top of them, like that. I'll fix them with the rake after. The ones that are too close together. These are all uh, homegrown, home harvested from last year, so I don't distinguish them anymore. They're all from here. Whether they're red, purple, white, I'm gonna put the purple ones out back in the gardens that are that are close to uh, close to the pond. 
because they're prettier. There we go. They're close together because they're planted, they're on top of the soil and they're going to be planted in a whole bunch of compost, really loose. So they're going to be able to grow really thickly, have a lot of nutrients and just fill the whole space. It should be really easy, I hope, to uh, harvest them in the fall. I've just added about 100 potatoes there and there are probably, I can't remember how many I planted the last time, maybe about, there are about 50 over here. And of course there are all these that were volunteers along with some covered up ones. Now I'm just gonna push them a little bit into the soil before I add some compost on top. But I need both my hands to do that, so I'm not gonna film that. But essentially I'm just gonna be doing this. Just push it a little bit into the soil like that. I'm gonna verify their spacing, make sure there's at least a little bit of space between each. That's all I'm gonna be doing for all the potatoes. And then I'm gonna cover them with, with a layer of compost. And then these hills here are for hilling up them, hilling them up when they start to grow. They're all now pushed a little bit into the ground. Like I said, just counted them, there were about 100. Now I'm gonna cover, finish covering them up. The other potatoes are doing really nicely. These are gonna be our first potatoes. Oh, and I'm gonna add a few. Got some space here. I'm gonna add some potatoes. These potatoes right here, one, two, three, four, five, are special. And I'm, I'm gonna give them a special P-shaped tag here because these potatoes are the ones that had grown from a potato plant that I had planted from a seed from a potato fruit. So these are absolutely original potatoes from open pollination. A flower that gave a fruit that gave a seed. So the potatoes are all covered now and the other ones are all mostly healed up. If it looked like I put lots of potatoes in this space, well, I found when harvesting them that there were empty spaces between the plants, which means I realized I could have put more. Last year, I put about 120 potatoes in this whole area. I find at the end of the season, the plants become really straggly. And so if there are more and of different ages, then some plants will come and fill the space that the other plants no longer need because they're done producing their potatoes. And then I just come and harvest them all at the same time at some point. Of course, I'm most likely gonna harvest those before any, any others and these two, but uh, I like to harvest most of them at the same time, towards really towards the end of the season, let's say September, uh, because I don't wanna have to store them for too long. So the only ones I harvest before September, it's going to be to eat them. Just beside the pond and the sorghum plantings. We have another one of our shinampa right here. This is also on top of water. Here, just laid down some potatoes that I'm now going to cover up. I love these purple ones, they're so beautiful. Here's the other shinampa, mini shinampa, by the pond, on top of water. And all of these potatoes that are growing here, they're all from the ones that I didn't manage to find last fall. Lots of potatoes. But in these empty spots, there's a nice thick layer of leaves. I'm just gonna throw some potatoes in there and then throw, throw the compost on top. Over there, I threw that pile of compost to eventually rake it, but there weren't any potatoes at the time, but they went and grew right through that pile. So I'm just gonna leave it there 
probably hard to see them but there's just a bunch of potatoes randomly strewn all over the leaves here now i'm just going to throw a bunch of soil on top including on top of all these little plants that are growing including on top of these strawberries that i transplanted into here last year because they're just gonna grow wider if i cover them right now and that's what i want i'd like this bed to be filled with strawberries on top of the shinampa here and i've strewn a whole bunch of potatoes sometimes i'll come out here and since that's a, a watermelon that we actually bought at the store and uh, had no flavor so i just brought it here planted it we got all these purple peruvians plus a couple others like uh, you know, a white or a yellow potato there's a little tiny red one over here these were what was left after i planted everything these are the strongest potatoes the purple peruvian now i'm just gonna go get some more compost to cover these guys right beside the water here not right over top of the water because you just saw the water back there and let's go to the other side of the shinampa in a spot that i kept open to show you what it looks like underneath this is what's underneath this whole shinampa about 20 centimeters eight inches of water potatoes are all covered up now all ready to start growing purple Peruvian pulling up from my three sisters patches. I'm gonna go put this on the ground. This is a perennial potato patch I never plant here and they always come back so it's part of my food forest. Don't have to plant lazy gardening all the rest. Well if I find a potato that comes back if I don't need it where it where it is. I throw it in here so I'm just gonna see that I just move the leaves there's a little hole already made for me for a mole I think mole eating grubs yeah, I'm just gonna bury it just leave the leaves exposed all done I'm sharing with you here one of my most unlikely of successful experiments I was not expecting this to be successful this is one of these 200 cell uh, flats I was really unhappy with with the onions. They, they didn't do well in them. I didn't expect carrots to do well in them, but they've done really well. I, uh, I, I took a little video of what, what I was doing earlier. You can see over here to my right, about 100 carrot starts here. They, they go around, around the corner there and, and in front of this row as well. There are probably about a couple dozen over there. I've planted, these are 100, 100 cells of carrots I've already transplanted around what's eventually going to be our tomatoes. I'm putting carrots around them, calendula around them, and basil around our tomatoes. Um, and so here I'm going to continue transplanting these carrots. I'm going to make sure I leave some space for, for the basil um, at the foot of my uh, tomatoes. Um, and so I'm going to show you that I'm, I'm quite surprised how they did. They've been hardening off for I think it's just about two weeks. These, these uh, cells I planted on March 25th, so I guess that's about seven weeks ago because uh, today's the, I think it's the 19th today, uh, Saturday coming, is it's Monday today and Saturday's the 25th, anyway, so on Saturday that'll be two months, so it's, uh, it's six days less than two months, and, and I'm, I'm really surprised, and like I said, they've been on the, let's say on the ground of, of, of our garden, on the on the surface, the soil surface of, a, of our garden around where I was planning on planting them, but I've changed my mind. Uh, carrots love tomatoes, so I want to plant them at the, I want to plant these guys at the foot of my tomatoes, but I'm gonna, gonna keep a few to plant elsewhere as well. I always like to do my experiments. So here goes. I've given the carrots a lot of space, more than maybe a single carrot would take, but that's because each one of these little bunches has got 
between at least three and six carrots in it. Now the thing about carrots is they don't mind being planted close together because if they've got a, enough space around them they will just push each other out and uh, get, find their space. So the, the, the carrot roots just kind of push on each other and they fill the space around them. And if they run out of space then what they sometimes do is they fuse or they make all sorts of interesting combinations. Sometimes you see carrots that look like they're hugging each other. Now these are at the base of, you can see these, uh, these red towers here and these posts here. Uh, this is where I'm gonna put uh, our, our tomatoes because carrots love tomatoes, which is the title of that book by uh, Louise Riot, a book about companion planting. And at the base of some of these carrots, uh, in that little bit of space between uh, the carrots and the row, I'm gonna put some calendula here and there. Here's the front of this. These two rows, more carrots and some calendula. Now, after breakfast, I'm gonna do the other side. All right. Water. See that, look at that holding together. I'm really surprised, really happy. goes right in, stands up, it's nice and hardened off. I love being able to just pull them out of the flat like this. And you know, with with it being them being such oh this was this one didn't do too well. With them being such small cells, to hold them to make the transplanter is tiny, so transplanting is really fast. the best day to transplant hot and sunny like this but it's gonna have to do flush out the hot water my hose got all got hot Oosh, it's almost boiling I don't want to water the, the new plants with boiling water if you have to transplant on a sunny day just make sure not to water the, put water on the leaves because you're just gonna, you're gonna cook those leaves. It's like when, you know, if you go to the beach on a sunny day and you go swimming and then you dry out in the sun and you burn faster. You don't wanna burn these plants. Normally I wouldn't even bother Transplanting on a sunny day, but got too much to do. Can't skip a day. I got a sorghum stem left over from last year. I just found another use for it. I'd like this lamp to be a little higher. So, don't need this anymore. There we go. That's a lot higher. Raspberries, wild raspberry. Just pulled it out of the garden and now I'm putting it along the contour where I need it to help protect. I just pulled aside some of the wood chips and these roots are so hard that I'm able to push it right in. Tail it, watch. There's the root. Well, this one's a bit softer, but it's still going in. And I'm just going to push the, the wood chips right back up against it. Some of these little pieces I'm just going to lay down because it's a vine. Oh, here's a nice big strong piece. Watch this. So look, see that? Nice big strong piece of... Look at that. It just pushed into the ground. That's amazing. We're going to have a little wall raspberry here. And now what I'm going to do, I've got wood chips and pieces of branches. I'm just going to put them back. Cover these guys up, cover the base up. I have a bunch of weeds that I just picked recently. I'll just throw them 
You know what? I got a whole bunch of mint here. Just gonna pull it and use it as a green mulch for this raspberry. Voila. All done. Got some new raspberry plants. It's called lazy gardening. I was weeding these raspberry plants out of where I have some lettuce. They're crowding the lettuce. And now I'm using it as a wall. Found this piece of wood chip in here in these wood chips near the surface. Sprouting, a sprouting wood chip. Looks like some kind of poplar. Amazing. I can't wait to plant these loofahs. I have never sown loofahs before. This is my first year and they're doing really well. They're already ready to climb. Got another couple cold nights coming up and then I'm going to transplant these out onto our hog panel. In about two weeks, maybe less, I'm going to be transplanting my peppers into here. You'd think, what? Peppers? Where are they going to grow in here? Well, this is all mustard. It's really easy to pull. I didn't plant any of it. But ever since our first year, the first thing to always grow here is mustard, and we never planted it. This is what it looked like the first year, too. When we got our garden ready, it was just full of mustard before we planted anything. And those leaves are delicious. And you let it flower. Well, I did a video last summer about the mustard seed, which is how you make your mustard sauce or paste or whatever you want to call it, mustard condiment with the seeds, the millions of seeds they grow. Beautiful plant, beautiful. And it's a strong scent and strong flavor, so it repels the animals. And here I'm gonna create a raised bed. These, all these mustard plants are going to hold some soil in place. Just so that I'm going to put it in some compost right here. Just right on top of the wood chips. A good thick layer. Good um, probably 20 centimeters, 8 inches. Because I'd like some cucumbers to grow up this little fence here. The, the, the cucumbers will grow really well here. And they can actually grow right up to the line that you can see right there. There it is. We'll see how that works. Instant guard. Damselflies were the tormentors of our first cats here, yin and yang. They would hang out over the creek, but especially over the bridge over the creek. And yin and yang would go after them, but they could never catch them. And the damselflies would lead yin and yang to the edges of the bridge and they would always end up falling in the water. Then we'd see them coming back towards the house, all frustrated and soaking wet to get dried up somewhere. And we'd see that it's because there are all sorts of damselflies around the bridge, because we'd see it happen too. They'd be going after them. They'd fall in the water. Funny little guys, these damselflies. I think this one needs help to get out of here. So I'm gonna help her out. I'm gonna help you get out of the greenhouse. The window's up top. I'll help you. Come on, let's go. Stay in my hand. Go on. There you are. There's always lots to share. And, uh, you know, I try and get better at this each time and uh, think ahead of time how I can get things ready. We appreciate uh, any comments that you have, ideas, of course your questions, if you have any questions, it'll be our pleasure to answer them. Just put them in the comments below 
uh, but we appreciate your comments and so on and um, I hope you liked the video I hope you found it useful and if you found it useful then share it with your friends and if you haven't done so like I've said before subscribe subscribe and support our channel and maybe you can watch some more of our videos have a great week and we will see you next time